Welcome to section 16 of the viruses. This is our overview figure showing the viruses that you need to know for step one. In this section, we will be discussing the first flavor virus, hepatitis C, which you can see right here. Now our hepatitis C story takes place in a pretty pasture outside this house. Recently, crop circles have appeared as a result of some alien invaders. The shape is a C, as in hepatitis C. And we have some cows over here with a big liver-shaped spots. Now these liver-shaped spots will help you think of the liver, which is the site of pathology for hepatitis C. So the C and the liver for hepatitis C. Notice the red warm color schemes here. As with other virus videos, a red warm color scheme represents RNA viruses. Now here is the spaceship the aliens use to travel to places to stomp out their crop circles. Now notice that their engine releases this rainbow exhaust. It's likely the prettiest way to pollute the atmosphere. Anyways, these rainbow fumes indicate the fact that hepatitis C is a positive sense virus. We like to think rainbows are positive, so positive rainbow for positive sense. Now the spaceship is well decorated with those icosahedral items on the top. You can see them all along the entire surface of the ship. These icosahedral decorations indicate that hepatitis C has an icosahedral capsid. Now look at this alien down here at the center of the field. He accidentally started a fire. This fire has spooked one of the cows, sending it running toward these scraggly branches over here on the left. These scraggly branches represent cirrhosis. In cirrhosis, hepatocytes become fibrotic and gnarled, kind of like these branches here. The fact that these branches, acting like long, gnarly fibers wrapping around the cow, especially its liver-shaped spot, should help you remember the fibrotic changes that occur in cirrhosis. The left image is a graphic representation of a healthy liver whereas the right image is a graphic representation of liver cirrhosis. Notice all those nodules and fibrotic tissue from the liver getting scarred. Now this liver cirrhosis can progress to liver cancer, specifically hepatocellular carcinoma. Now developing hepatocellular carcinoma is one of the concerns with hepatitis C infections. To help you remember this cancer idea, we've included this pink cancer ribbon. Look at the tree trunk right there with the pink ribbon. Now pink ribbons like this are often used as a symbol of hope and awareness for cancer victims. So tying these ideas together, think of these scraggly branches wrapping around the liver spotted cow as cirrhosis. And then remember the pink cancer ribbon to remind yourself that cirrhosis can progress to hepatocellular carcinoma. Now look at the cute little bird's nest on the end of this long branch. The eggs need to incubate until they are ready to hatch. These incubating eggs on this long branch are there to remind you that the incubation period for hepatitis C is long. Now look at the skin of this alien. It's yellow. This represents the jaundice caused by hepatitis C, which is a sensible concept because it's hepatitis, inflammation of the liver, which is known to cause jaundice. You may have noticed this long line in the grass that the spooked cow created when it ran towards those scraggly branches. This line indicates that hepatitis C is a linear virus. Now hearing all this commotion, this man has walked outside to see what was going on. You can see he's carrying his heat lamp with him to help him see, in case it was still dark out. Now the heat lamp represents fevers, which are common with hepatitis C infections. Now look at his sister who's sick outside on the porch. She's been sick for a while, so she's hooked up to a mobile IV drip. This represents the fact that hepatitis C is transmitted mainly through IV drug use. So girl with an IV drip stands for transmission through IV drugs. It looks like the aliens got hungry. Before they take off to a new crop field to stomp out a new C, they thought they'd just harpoon this fat cow, the fattest cow they could find. And that cow really is ginormously fat, so it makes sense that they chose that one. And this harpooned fat cow represents the liver biopsy in patients with chronic hepatitis C. As the harpoon pulls out of the poor cow's fatty flesh, it pulled with it some fat. Look at all that yellow fat. The harpoon also pulled out some of the cow's white fur. Now this is a trichome stained liver biopsy. And I want you to notice two things. One, the inflammation. And two, the fat. Now inflammation can best be seen with these lymphoid aggregates right here that come to the liver and create inflammation. Now these big vacuoles right here represent the presence of fat. So this biopsy is consistent with the fat and lymphoid aggregates seen in hepatitis C infections. So again, the harpoon pulling out the white fur and yellow fat stands for steatosis, or fat in the liver, and lymphoid aggregates seen on liver biopsy. Now let's look at this pretty fence down here. It has a sign on it that reads, no cow tipping from three to five. Now the local high school gets out of class around three o'clock. So restricting cow tipping from three o'clock to five o'clock cuts down on a lot of the unwanted teenage hooligans that like to come cow tipping. The owners of these cows restricted cow tipping for only two hours though. They're not heartless. The numbers three to five represent the three to five prime exonuclease enzyme that hepatitis C lacks. Normally a three to five prime exonuclease will read any mistakes during replication and cut them out. 
if these mistakes are not cut out, an incredible variety of antigens can blossom regularly on their envelope. To help you remember antigenic variation, we have all these flowers growing on the fence. There's so many different types of blossoming here. So the fact that hepatitis C lacks three to five prime exonuclease, leading to antigenic variation on the envelope is very significant. It's because it results in an inability to create a vaccine because you can't target envelope proteins that are always changing. The second problem caused is the fact that the patient's immune system really can't ever mount a full effective attack against the virus. And this makes sense why hepatitis C can become chronic. If your immune system can't ever really fully destroy it, it'll just stick around. So since this was kind of a big and important idea, I just want to repeat it one more time. No cow tipping sign from three to five. There's no three to five prime exonuclease activity. This leads to a high antigenic variation of envelope proteins and this leads to a weak immune response and no vaccine for hepatitis C. Now, fearful of the fire his comrade caused, this little guy has decided to hitch a ride on this cow to be carried away from harm. Now, this cow carrying the alien away from the fire represents the fact that patients can be a carrier of hepatitis C without actually having an active infection. This means that carriers won't have an infection, but if they engage in IV drug use and share their needles, they can infect somebody else. So cow carrying the alien away from the fire represents asymptomatic carriers in hepatitis C. Now let's talk about the treatment of hepatitis C. In recent years, there have been some incredible developments in treatment for hepatitis C. One of the medications hep C patients can be successfully treated with is ribavirin. To help you remember ribavirin, we have shown this poor dead cow with its ribs exposed. You see, the aliens actually harpooned this dead cow first before they got a successful biopsy from that fat cow. In any case, ribs sound like ribavirin, which is an excellent treatment for hepatitis C. Now look at those people on the porch over here. They're sitting on this old comfy sofa. Sofa kind of sounds like sofospovir, another excellent treatment for hepatitis C. Now that goober behind the couch is just eating lead paint off the barn wall. Lead kind of sounds like ledipasvir, another good treatment for hepatitis C. So lead paint for ledipasvir. Now that the sun is rising, the aliens need to get out of the way. They are allergic to the sun and will burn up with its rays. You can see this terrified alien with his arms up, screaming in pain. Look at all those burn marks. Well, these burns from the sun represent porphyria cutanea tarda. Patients with this condition demonstrate remarkable photosensitivity with blistering and hyperpigmentation. For whatever reason, hepatitis C is associated with this condition, meaning that hepatitis C patients may develop porphyria cutanea tarda. So again, blistering and burning from the sun stands for porphyria cutanea tarda. Hepatitis C infections are also associated with non-Hodgkin's lymphomas, or NHL. To help you remember this idea, we've got those people on the sofa actually watching a professional hockey game on TV. In North America, the professionals play in the National Hockey Association, or NHL. So again, watching NHL on TV stands for association with NHL. And when the spaceship flew over the barn, it actually brought with it an enormous gust of wind that rocked the barn and everything on it. For example, the wind knocked over these antennas, which caused them to fall and smash through the window. If you're curious, it's so hard to get reception out here in the boonies. So these people need a lot of antennas, not just one. That's why you see so many. Anyways, these antennas look like antibodies. In hepatitis C, antibodies can clump up and clog vessels, which leads to numerous problems. This is called cryoglobulinemia. So the antennas are entering the window and partially blocking anyone from seeing out of the window, just like the antibodies will clump and block small blood vessels. To help you remember the name of this condition, cryoglobulinemia, we've brought this girl who's crying. When the antennas burst into her window, the girl was shocked and started crying. Startled by the crash, this girl let go of all her precious red balloons. You can see these balloons soaring upward above the barn. Unfortunately, some of the blown over antennas have started popping the balloons. Now the red balloons represent red blood cells. And again, the antennas represent antibodies. So antennas popping the red balloons represent antibodies destroying red blood cells, also called autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Unfortunately, some of the antenna clumps smash into the rain gutter, damaging it horribly. So the rain gutter is now doing a poor job collecting water. As you can see water just spilling out of it. Now this membrane represents membranous glomerulonephropathy. The rain gutter represents the basement membrane. The antenna clumps represent immune complexes which attack the basement membrane. The left image shows a glomerulus with a normal basement membrane, whereas the right image shows membranous glomerulonephropathy. Compared to normal, you can see how the basement membrane is thickened all around the glomerulus. Now membranous glomerulonephropathy is a very important association to make with hepatitis C. So just remember, the antenna breaking the rain gutter, creating a membrane, 
represent antibodies attacking the glomerular basement membrane in membranous glomerular nephropathy. Now, the owner of the property hired those hooligans on the sofa there to paint his house and barn. It looks like they got distracted with the NHL game on TV. So they just splotched red randomly all across the wall. Well, this strange pattern they created represents the interesting appearance of lichen planus. Lichen planus is a skin condition that patients with hepatitis C often develop. Here are some images demonstrating lichen planus. You can see it causes this unique splotchy appearance. So again, splotchy botched paint job stands for lichen planus. Here are some dyed beads hanging from a wind chime. These dyed beads represent diabetes, another pathology associated with hepatitis C. Now it looks like the destroyed antennas took another victim. It's got the owner's son there on the ground. It pinned him to the ground by the throat, smashing his neck slightly. And once again, the antenna is shaped like an antibody, and it's smashing his neck near the thyroid. This represents autoimmune hypothyroidism, another pathology that's associated with hepatitis C. Now that we've covered the image, let's do a question to apply this. A 35-year-old man presents to clinic due to complaints of fever and yellowing of his skin. He has a 16-year history of IV drug abuse and regular unprotected sex with prostitutes. The physician orders blood tests which suggest an active viral infection. Additionally, AST and ALT levels were slightly elevated. Physical examination reveals slight yellowing of the sclera in both eyes. To treat the infection, the physician prescribes ribavirin and lidipisvir. Based on the likely virus, which of the following statements is true? A. The virus was most likely obtained through unprotected intercourse. B. This infection confers a higher likelihood of developing lichen planus. C. There is no vaccine because the virus lacks an envelope. D. The liver is likely unaffected at this stage in the patient's illness. Or E. The virus could only have been transmitted from a symptomatic carrier. Now hopefully from the question stem you notice that this patient most likely has a hepatitis C infection. He has a fever and jaundice including scleral icterus, and we also know that he has a virus. And the high AST and ALT point towards a liver infection. And the best clue that this patient has hepatitis C is the fact that he was prescribed hepatitis C antivirals, ribavirin and lidipisvir. With this in mind, the correct answer is B. This infection confers a higher likelihood of developing lichen planus. This doesn't mean that he will develop this, but it's now more likely given the association of hepatitis C to lichen planus. And remember all those red splotches on the barn represent lichen planus. Now choice A is wrong because hepatitis C is more likely obtained through IV drug use than through sexual intercourse. Now this man has both risk factors, so we'd assume that he acquired it through the far more common mode of IV drug use, not unprotected sex. Hepatitis B and D are more closely associated with transmission through sexual intercourse. So whenever you think of hepatitis C, think of IV drug use. Remember that girl in this image with the IV drip. Now choice C is wrong because hepatitis C does have an envelope. Recall that no one in the image was naked. Even the aliens had those little leggings, so we know that hepatitis C is not naked and must have an envelope. The reason that we can't develop a vaccine for hepatitis C is because of the high antigenic variation on the envelope, not because it lacks an envelope. Now choice D is wrong because the patient has elevated liver enzymes, AST and ALT, indicating that the liver is currently actively impacted by the illness. Plus he has jaundice another symptom of hepatic damage. Finally, choice E is wrong because there are asymptomatic carriers of hepatitis C. Remember that alien getting carried away by that cow? This means that the person who transmitted the infection to our patient may not have been symptomatic. It's certainly possible that he or she was symptomatic, but claiming that the virus could only have been transmitted from a symptomatic carrier, as choice E suggests, is incorrect. And that should be all you need to know about hepatitis C.